Internal investigation by Israel's military has acknowledged that its troops failed to protect civilians during Hamas's October 7th terror attacks. The inquiry detailed a slow and disorganized response to the attack on the Be'eri Kibbutz, one of the worst hit communities that day. Israel's defense minister is calling for a state inquiry into the attack and the government's response. Security cameras capture the moment Hamas fighters surrounded Kibbutz Bere. Their attack began early in the morning on October 7th and ended with 101 residents killed, another 32 people taken hostage. The military has now admitted the community waited hours for help to arrive, with forces waiting outside the kibbutz into the afternoon as residents were being killed. The Israel Defense Forces failed in their mission to protect the residents of Kibbutz Beri. It is painful and difficult for me to say this. The IDF should have defended the residents of Kibbutz Beri. But unfortunately, we were not there. For long hours of fighting, for hours, the residents of Bure defended their families with their bodies alone in front of the terrorists. The military admitted it was unprepared for the infiltration of militants, didn't have enough forces in the area and said its fighting was uncoordinated. The investigation praised the bravery of the kibbutz residents, but some still have questions. The conclusion of this investigation, this is what uh, was supposed to calm me down in the future. But we didn't get the answer why the army didn't come in a minute, why uh, we left alone. Some conclusions, but not like the big picture conclusion and uh, what could have done differently and what they are going to do on the next step. How can we feel secure again? Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, is now calling for a national inquiry. The probe needs to check me, Minister of Defense. It needs to check the Prime Minister. It needs to check the Chief of Staff and the head of the Shin Bet. Human rights groups have previously criticized Israeli army investigations, saying they rarely result in punishment. Israel's fighting in Gaza in response to the October 7th attacks has killed 38,000 people, according to Hamas-run health authorities. Israel is now facing allegations of war crimes and genocide in international courts. Well, I'm joined now by Balik Sladin. He's a journalist based in Tel Aviv. Good evening to you, Balik. Maybe we can start by you telling us how remarkable is it that the IDF has admitted its own failings, its own mistakes? Well, uh, if the question is uh, if that's unusual, then uh, the answer is no. This is not the first investigation in uh, cases like this. It has been done also after the uh, Yom Kippur War, when uh, Egypt by then uh, attacked or surprisingly attacked uh, um, uh, Israel on that day, and there has been lots of failure, and uh, the IDF by then also uh, admitted uh, their mistakes. Also after the 2006 uh, uh, war or uh, military operation, if we can call it this way, uh, with the Hezbollah, uh, there has been uh, also internal investigation and uh, conclusions that uh, led to uh, many uh, uh, punishments uh, for the um, uh, senior commanders in Israel, and also the uh, prime minister was affected by this, the defense minister as well. So this is not the first time, and this uh, has been expected. It what has been announced a couple of months ago. There has been some pushback uh, for it, uh, especially by the political level for their own reasons, uh, but uh, this is not the first time, and uh, this has been expected in Israel. Yeah, talk to me about the consequences that this report uh, could have, particularly for the prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Well, theoretically speaking, uh, he's not affected by it. This is an internal investigation inside the IDF, inside the military, and it uh, is just for uh, learning from their mistakes and uh, concluding what they can do better in the future. But practically speaking, while we're talking about uh, uh, this investigation, the uh, this is apparently bad news for the prime minister. And that's, that's why there has been some pushback from uh, his office uh, when 
it has been announced because of the fact that uh, when the investigations start, then it means that we will uh, at some point uh, have more pressure on the prime minister to open that state inquiry, that independent investigation that will investigate him as well. Now, just a couple of hours ago, a recent poll, 40% uh, of Israelis, 39 specifically, has said that he is the one to blame more than anyone else in the uh, political level and also the military level uh, for the uh, 7th of October attack. And even 72% of Israelis say that he should resign either now or at some point in the future. So uh, apparently this is, uh, of course, going to be uh, uh, considered bad news for the prime minister. Our report that aired just before you and I began talking, you know, highlighted the Barry kibbutz. What do we know about the survivors um, from that kibbutz? I mean, how are they doing today? Well, uh, most of them, of course, evacuated after the uh, October 7th attack. Uh, but uh, from the recent data uh, that uh, has been announced uh, six days ago, so last week, by the Knesset, apparently most of them came back. There is no specific uh, number of uh, um, the people that came back to their homes in each kibbutz, but 43,000 of those who, who evacuated came back to their homes, apparently because of the um, relatively safe situation right now. We are not hearing any sirens in the, in the uh, uh, south, excuse me. And uh, the situation is different, of course, now. But uh, in terms of uh, how they are doing, of course, they are seeking answers now uh, for their uh, for the failure of uh, the IDF back then and also uh, for the failure of the political level. Uh, so, of course, they are devastated, but they want to go back to their lives. And that's better, apparently, for them than uh, leaving their homes to uh, some hotels or motels uh, anywhere else in Israel. Journalist Mbalik Islati with the latest tonight from Tel Aviv. Balik, we appreciate your reporting tonight. Thank you.